in terms of the curriculum that he he built up and we've been following up to this time at the Department of Visual Communication, we go through the processes. So when I was a student, the process that Mang Larry did, which is, you know, ingrained in the in the curriculum or in the courses that were part of the visual communication program which he initiated. We imbibed it. So actually yung yung process on yan ma mahaba at masalimuot. We see only the end product. But there's a lot of one conceptualization. There's even research. Research could be you know your own personal observation of things around you. Research could be the bookish thing, but with Mang Larry he's a very observant person. And that was even proven by, you know, my, my talks with the, the family and they would tell me their experiences even even yung when they are stopped on the road and they would play games like, oh, what do you think is this man thinking of at the moment? It's getting into the core of the, the subject or the target of the person and that becomes very essential in building up a, a visual material that is not on a very shallow level. Larry Alcala, Slices of Life, Wit and Humor, is the museum's special offering for National Heritage Month with our project partners. It is also our first off-site exhibit for the whole year or after the pandemic. The exhibition is also very important because it flags our transition of the Metropolitan Museum now branded as the M, as we move to our new spaces, also here in BGC, which is next door to SMORA. We would like to thank everyone who participated in this exhibition or in this project, especially our partner, Filipinas Heritage Festivals, Inc., and National Commission on Culture and the Arts, and SM Supermalls. The exhibition is also an opportunity for the museum to reiterate and reaffirm our commitment to Filipino culture, sharing Filipino culture as one of the pillars of our mission and for our mission for programming and exhibitions. So we invite everyone to come to the Larry Alcala Show and look forward to seeing everyone after such a long time to future openings from here on. Thank you. I would just like to thank the Metropolitan Museum has been a partner for so many projects. Every year we would have projects with the Metropolitan Museum. And with that, they are with us in promoting our heritage, in promoting our culture and arts. We are going to be together in promoting our heritage and culture. As Rizal had said, ang hindi marunong tumingin sa kanyang pinanggalingan, hindi makararating sa kanyang pinaroroonan. Thank you, Metropolitan Museum. Mang Larry was the one who initiated the program for visual communication at the College of Fine Arts. Kasi dati it's very studio. And then he initiated the program and now we have the Department of Visual Communication. It gives importance and value to illustration and graphic design as part of the creative fields. Your memory ko noon made me realize a lot of things that he really is a valuable artist of our country. Because you have so many options, a tendency ng mga designers, artists, gamitin lahat. But you have to temper yourself. E nung kay Mang Larry, it wasn't digital. I, I guess that was also the advantage of not having all the options. But it was really tough work because, you know, being able to portray the scene or create uh, images in such a way that you tell the story and you have this approach to a scene na yung scope eh malaki, it really entails a lot of yung keenness and tempering oneself in terms of skill so that you portray the scenes effectively and you tell your messages in a simple but an, in an effective manner. We started this Filipino Heritage uh, Festival in, in 2003. And uh, since then, every year we've been celebrating it 
in various ways. We would have exhibits like this, for example. Mrs. Kulaiko was able to get in touch with Miss Willie Lison of SM, who is always, always very helpful to uh, the Filipino Heritage Festival. So we were able to get this place. Good morning, everyone, to this R M Art Inspired series of the Metropolitan Museum of Manila featuring Larry Alcala. Let's welcome Ms. Tina Koylaiko, President of the M, for a few remarks. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today as we remember, fondly remember, National Artist for the Visual Arts, Larry Alcala and pay tribute to the beloved cartoonist, illustrator, mentor, and educator. As mentioned earlier, earlier uh, to mark, we marked the National Heritage Month and our first off-site exhibit with our partners, Filipinas Heritage Festivals, Inc., the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, SM Supermalls, and SMX Aura. And this is in celebration of the most memorable comic series of Alcala Slices of Life. Today's webinar is part of the Art Inspires online series of the museum, featuring exclusive interviews and talks with curators, artists, scholars, and writers who share their expertise and perspectives on the museum's exhibition and collection. And for today, we are very honored to have the curator of the Larry Alcala exhibit, Professor Ruben de Jesus, joined by two panel discussants, Mr. Aldi Aguirre and Mr. Carl Javier to have vibrant conversations this morning. And so to move on, I would like to turn over the screen to our museum's Associate Director for Education Programming, Mr. Randall Urbano, who will be the moderator for the panel this morning. Thank you, Randall. Thank you, Ms. Kolaiko. And as part of our education and public programs for the museum, we have now this uh, M Art Inspires talk today. And we will have also several other programs over the next few months in relation to the uh, current exhibit now at SMX Aura. For now, I would like to introduce our first uh, speaker or co uh, converser for today, and he is Professor Ruben de Jesus. Professor de Jesus, uh, the curator of the ongoing exhibition uh, of Slices of Life with and Humor, has known the national artist uh, Larry Alcala or Mang Larry for many years as a mentor and a colleague. Uh, at the UP Diliman College of Fine Arts. Professor De Jesus is currently a faculty member at the UP uh, CFA as well, and is the sectoral representative for illustrators of the Philippine Board on Books for Young People or PBBY. He is also a founding member and the former president of the organization Ang Ilustrador ng Kabataan or Ang Inc. And uh, this organization celebrates and supports illustrators for children's books. Also, his illustrators, uh, illustrations have received awards from the New York Showcase Exhibition and Competition of the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators and the NOMA Concourse for Children's Book Illustrators in Tokyo, Japan. So I would like to present or give the floor now to Professor Desus. Magana umaga po, Sir uh, Ruben. Morning. Morning. Uh, thank you, Randall, and thank you for having me for this afternoon's talk. And um, thank you, everyone, for joining us to celebrate uh, the art and mastery of national artist Larry Alcala. So let me just share my screen.
I hope my screen is okay. So, okay. So good afternoon again. Um, content and form in a body of work give us an idea of its creator's concerns. The work may be personal or clearly intended for a particular audience. It can also exhibit the author's stand on relevant issues presented with wit and humor. This is what makes national artist Larry Alcala's slice of life and his other cartoon creations very skillful, creative, interesting, and most of all, relevant up to this time. As a student at the University of the Philippines, Larry Alcala was recipient of scholarships. He was active in the Philippine Collegian UP student organ as a staff artist and as a representative of the board of management. Thus, he was an ideal model of the scholar ng bayan, one who offered his creative and organizational skills to serve the Filipino people to whom he owed his exemplary education. Alcala joined the faculty of the UP College of Fine Arts immediately after his graduation in 1952. He was to stay there until he retired 30 years later. Through his efforts, visual communication was institutionalized as one of the fields of study at the UP College of Fine Arts. Illustration and graphic design as important components of advertising and editorial design were given ample coverage in the visual communication course offerings. This move kept the school abreast with the creative developments in more advanced countries while applying these visual standards to address local issues through effective images. Alcala, dearly called Manglari, shared with budding artists the technical skills and material components needed in translating concepts into crisp images. In this process of sharing, he enjoyed sitting down with his students and exchanging stories, not about creating, but about living. This made his mentoring productive and relevant. Alcala started his career by juggling schoolwork and cartooning. His dedication and discipline helped him endure the pressure of having to produce daily outputs for several decades. In his long and productive career as cartoonist, he created hundreds of distinct and memorable cartoon characters. His comic strips exhibiting a balance of message and humor, served as commentaries on Philippine society. His first comic strip, Islao Palitao, appeared in Liwayway magazine after World War II. His first comic strip, or rather in 1947, he created Kalabog and Bosho, his longest running comic strip first published in Filipino comics. The two bungling detectives featured in this work speak a blend of Tagalog and English as they go through their hilarious misadventures. In Mang Ambo, another comic strip, the titular character mirrors the weakness and eccentricities of the Filipino 
as he goes through life in Barrio Bulabog. Mang Ambo is annoyed at the lack of good sense in his community, though he himself sometimes tries to get away with his foolishness to face life's demands while keeping to his comfort zone. Shopa Man is a big nose, large tooth, and overweight but energetic superhero. His heroic adventures are capped with a big treat of shopao or a dive into an enormous serving of Filipino dishes and desserts. I just have to refresh this, sorry. Professor De Jesus, I can share, I am sharing now your screen from my end. All right. So do you want me to go to which um, slide? Um, uh, just continue. I'll, yes, just let it move. And then, okay. All right. All right. Okay. Ashang Aksaya may be regarded as the poster boy for wasteful ways and reckless spending. There are times when he tries to counteract his ridiculous extravagance by attempting to cut down on cost. But these supposedly alternative measures turn out to be even more costly and absurd. As early as the 1960s, Alcala had already been making commentaries on the political system with his wit and critical sense. Bribery, vote buying, non-payment of taxes, and kickbacks from government projects are personified by the character Congressman Kalog. Next slide, please. Of course, Alcala's reader fans always look for his caricature profile. Hidden within the busy scenes and situations depicted in each weekly release of his slice of life artwork. Common practices, local traditions, community events, and even national issues were presented in a panel of tableaus of the Filipino way of life. Alcala made the viewer not just an observer, but also a participant in the situations he depicted. His houses and buildings are rendered in straight and precise pen and ink lines, giving a hint of his earlier leanings towards engineering. His people are rendered simply as somehow dictated by cartoon visual standards, but are variably expressive depending on the situations and events. Creating crowds is a visual skill that, if not masterfully handled, results in clutter and imbalance. Rhythm is the key to his execution grouping similar elements in horizontal or diagonal succession. Next slide, please. I was not lucky enough to have him as my professor at the UP College of Fine Arts. My only encounter with Professor Alcala was when he was a panelist in my pre-defense thesis presentation. But in 1991, I was blessed to be part of a children's book illustration workshop organized by the Philippine Board on Books for Young People, or PBBY. Manglari was one of the founders of PBBY, the group that organized the workshop with the Guthy Institute. After the workshop, we thought of forming a group of illustrators for children. The board, led by two national artists, 
Larry Alcala, and Virgilio Almario gave us their blessings with full confidence. Now, our group, Ang Ilustrador ng Kabataan, is on its 30th fruitful year. Next slide, please. Mang Larry gained respect and goodwill among Asian artists. He was our country's representative to the first Asian cartoonist conference in Hiroshima. There, he met Osamu Tezuka, the creator of Astro Boy and known to be the proponent of the manga revolution in Japan. The professional bond between these two icons continued with cordial written exchanges of their thoughts on how cartooning can be fostered in the Asian region. Next slide, please. According to his family members, the dining table was always a venue for lengthy discussions about anything under the sun, with Alcala and wife Lupe encouraging the healthy exchange of ideas. He made sure that his children were exposed to the arts and sciences by bringing them to the museums, science fairs, and concerts at that time. He instilled discipline in his children, but also allowed them to take breathers from their studies and assignments to watch television. Alcala humanized objects that were dear to him and his family. He gave names to cars that they had through the years. Choi for their Chevrolet, Bok for their Vauxhall, Itoi for their Toyota. In the 1950s, he named their television set Teban. When they stopped in traffic, he made his children observe the pedestrians crossing the street and guess what this man or woman could be thinking at that particular moment. Alcala created his own stories about these people based on his observations. According to the eldest, Lauro or Boyet Alcala Jr., he and his siblings acquired this gift of keen observation and boundless imagination from their father. Boyet also remembers that his father always made sure that they heard mass before visiting his grandparents in Singalong for the weekend gathering with relatives. I still remember the conversation between two grade, grade school students at the parking space in front of the Claret Church in Quezon City, where I attended the wake for Larry Alcala in 2002. This was the short conversation. Student one, sino ba nakaburot sa chapel? Student two, yung nagdodrawing sa dyaryo ng maraming tao, maraming nangyayari. Tapos, hahanapin mo yung mukha niya na nakatago doon sa drawing. There are so many negative things happening in our country right now. There are so many struggles that we have to go through as an individual, as a community, and as a country. Larry Alcala's art is still very relevant during these times. In his simple but distinct style, he has effectively captured the core of the Filipino in his slice of life and his character creations such as Mang Ambo, Asyong Aksaya, Shopauman, Kalabog and Bosho, and Congressman Kadot. Next slide, please. His legacy as an educator, mentor, and proponent of, proponent of the visual communication program at the university has made the role of the artist more significant in Philippine society. Most of all, his art can be appreciated by Filipinos from all levels of society. There is mastery in his simplicity. There are messages in his images. His galleries are the dailies. 
amidst all the uncertainties and struggles that we have to face and are continually facing, I hope and pray that we go back and look for these positive values that have been belittled and hidden in the noise, chaos, and deception that Filipinos also created. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Professor De Jesus, for that overview of Alcala's life and works. And uh, we now, from the history of Alcala, or quick overview of his uh, activities for the past years, or more than five decades, actually, um, we now hear uh, from the younger generation. Uh, we have Aldi Aguirre, who is also part of Ang Inc. Uh, he's an artist and illustrator based in Quezon City. Most of his works can be seen in children's books from different publishers and independent writers. He has been given awards and recognitions for his works locally by the Philippine Board on Books for the Young People and the National Development Board as well and abroad by Illustrarte in Castelo Branco, Portugal and Sharjah Exhibition for Children's Book Illustrations. Uh, some of his illustrations for, uh, for the book Papuntang Community Party, Community Pantry were recently chosen as a finalist in the 2022 Bologna Children's Books Fair Illustrators Competition, while the picture book Sikian had been included in the White Ravens catalog by the International Youth Library in Munich, Germany. So I think alongside with other Inc. members, there's also an exhibition at the Ateneo Art Gallery happening now. So we are very glad that Aldi are, uh, is joining us today for some of his uh, comments or insights on Larry Alcala and perhaps a little bit of how it affected his practice. So Aldi, magandang umaga. Hello, good morning, Rando. Thank you, Una, for calling me and uh, considering me part of the younger generation of illustrators. Yeah, thank <laughs> sure, you. Sure. And, and second, for inviting me. For Thank you, M, or Metropolitan Museum of, uh, of Manila, for inviting me. To, to talk about Sir Larry Alcala's work and how our works as illustrators or children's books illustrators, um, uh, how can how the younger generation of illustrators can, can learn from Larry Alcala's practice and artworks as well. So una, no, when, when I was invited, it, hello everyone then, thank you for uh, spending your morning with us. And hello everyone. And um, yung una kung na, uh, the first thing that I, that I imagined when I was invited here was if Larry or if Sir Larry Alcala is still with us. Kung ano yung mga cartoons, especially specifically dun sa slice of life. Kung ano yung mga kung ano pa yung mga gagawin yung slice of life. Um, if is still around with us. Naiisip ko siguro makakapagpahinga yung yung kamay niya sa pagdo-drawing dun sa time ng pandemic kasi puro bahay lang ang ido-drawing niya siguro because because of the lockdowns, di ba? walang tao sa labas. Siguro yung mga bata nakasilip lang sa bahay, um, eager and wanting to to go outside and play. Siguro makakapagpahinga rin yung kamay niya. Ano, same thing nung nung time ni nung time nung ano, nung war on drugs of uh, President Duterte's uh, administration. Kasi wala rin tao nun sa labas dahil takot, especially sa gabi. Dahil takot yung mga tao dun sa mga nangyayaring ano, yung mga nangyayaring um, Yung mga nangyayari nung panahon na yun, syempre, yung mapagbintangan ka or, or doon sa mga totoong uh, guilty of uh, using and uh, buying or selling drugs, na, na wala rin tao sa labas. So makakapagpahinga rin si Sir Larry nun. Kasi puro bahay lang din, wala rin tao sa labas masyado. But uh, come this uh, season, ma medyo mapapagod na rin siya ulit. Special, specifically, doon naisip ko, doon sa, sa mga campaign rally ni ni Vice President Lenny Robredo, for example, ang dami kasi tao eh, di ba? Ang daming tao na nag sa rally. So, so imagine niyo yun na, na, na Sir Larry is still with us then creating cartoons, slice of life, from those uh, from those scenarios that I mentioned. Yun, ang dami ng tao sa rally dun sa isang scenario. Walang, walang tao because because of what's happening. So, uh, and yun. Um, and the first thing also that I like uh, with uh, Sir Larry Alvarez's work 
is uh, as Sir Ruben mentioned earlier, yung, pag, yung sobrang simple niya and lighthearted. But um, it's still, it mirrors uh, those things that are happening in the current, uh, in the current uh, situation that where the Philippines is, right? Where, where, where the Philippines is, nung, nung time na yan. For example, for example, um, nung, nung yung um, people power sa EDSA, yan, meron din sa slice of life, may nakita rin ako na, na depiction ni, ni Sir Larry Alcala of, of how he sees, um, uh, how he depicts people power, yung EDSA people power nung, nung time na yan. Then meron din nung pagsabog, pagsabog ng yun, volcano. So, so um, with the simplistic or yung sa, sa mga simple drawings and illustrations ni, ni Sir Larry Alcala, napapakita niya or he's uh, showing what's happening dun sa paligid. Para rin siyang, ano eh, para rin siyang nagiging way para malaman ng ibang tao yung nangyayari sa paligid if in case hindi nila alam na ganun yung nangyayari. So uh, in a way ganun din yung children's book eh in um as an illustrator sa children uh, for children's books. Um ganun din eh may mga story there there our our job is to illustrate the stories and those stories include stories that are happening in in real life. So in a way it's showing the readers especially younger readers and their parents kung ano yung nangyayari labas doon sa, sa, sa nararanasan ng particular na family na yun kasi hindi naman tayo pare-parehas ng nararanasan outside our household, out, out, outside our, our bubble, kumbaga. So it's a, it's a way of telling these stories, uh, showing them that this is happening na in case na hindi, na, hindi, hindi, hindi ka pala aware na may mga ganun nangyayari. Na, na, na in a way it's uh, a creative way of, uh, of uh, showing and telling uh, younger people and their parents um, on the current situation on in the current happenings na, na nangyayari sa paligid. So um, parehas dun sa ginagawa ni Sir Larry Alcal, specifically dun sa Slice of Life, ganun din, parang pinapakita niya. Eh, para siyang comic relief eh, kahit na mabigat yung, kahit na mabigat yung, yung nangyayari because of the witty and um, um and yung yung comic style yung style ng drawing ni Larry Alcala na madaling madaling i-absorb na relatable uh, nagkakaroon ng interest yung mga readers and after having interest on those illustrations yun na unti-unti ma, ma ano mo na ma-absorb mo na yung message na gustong iparating uh, ni Sir Larry Alcala ko, ah, ganito pala yung nangyayari. So, same way, ganun din sa children's book illustration. So, um, aside from creating artworks that will capture the children's imagination, nandun din, uh, after, after, um, after creating attraction to the readers na, ah, attach ka na dun sa illustrations, ang ganda kasi, attractive, Nandun yung story behind it, kung ano, whether it be uh, lighthearted, whether it be um, uh, concerning uh, the political situation that we're in, whether it be like uh, um, um, kung ano mang nangyari dun sa, kung ano mang nangyari sa paligid, kung ano mang issues na tinatakal, kahit na mabigat siya, kahit na magaang siya. The thing is, illustrations are beautiful artworks first, then uh, after that, after being absorbed with the beautiful illustrations and artworks, nandun na, yung, yung, ano na rin, yung parang pag-process na, ah, ganito pala yung nangyayari, may ganito palang nangyayari. Tapos, gusto ko rin point out na Sir Larry Alcala, um, ma, ma, maganda rin mapulot ng younger, uh, kami, kami mga younger illustrators and artists, yung pagiging uh, magaling na storyteller ni Sir Larry Alcala. Because, in a one-page artwork, in a one-page illustration, specifically, again, dun sa, sa slice of life, kompleto yung istorya. May istorya kang mabubuo dun sa isang page lang ngayon. May istorya na, na, na na-communicate, may message na convey dun within the story si Sir Larry Alcala. What more uh, if we're given a chance to tell a story with multiple pages, in, for example, in children's books, di ba? So... So aside from creating beautiful artworks, dapat rin, we should keep in mind that 
we should be storytellers. Diba? We should be effective storytellers. Si Sir Larry Agalat, relatable. Diba? Relatable yung mga characters niya. Tapos talagang mauhook ka. Mauhook ka doon sa mga characters na ginawa niya. So same thing with, with illustration, with children's book illustrations. Dapat nandun yung element of being a storyteller, of creating characters that will um, that the audience will be able to relate to. Para siyempre, para, para siyempre, para ma, 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 paano ba yun? Para, um, para ma-absorb ng, ng readers at makarelate siya. For, exa- for example, galing dito sa, sa ganitong pan, sa, sa poor family, alimbawa, yung character. So, if hindi ganun yung pagkakadipik mo as an illustrator, hindi naman ganun yung itsura na. So, para makakarelate yung mga bata na galing dun sa, sa, sa target mong uh, uh, family or household. Kung hindi naman, eh, hindi naman ganun yung itsura ko. So, hindi naman ako yan. Eh. Parang, mm-hmm. parang ano, ano ka, parang hindi ka attached dun sa character. So, yun yung maganda rin ma, mapulot ng young illustrators, yeah. younger illustrators. from Sir Larry Alcala's work. Yung nagiging relatable ng characters and so also being a good storyteller. Definitely, Aldi. I think yung depiction, uh, the way, as a chronicler, uh, I think, and we could actually talk about this later in detail, mm-hmm. no? kung paano mm-hmm. maging effective na chronicler, paano naging creative, uh, effective and creative na chronicler of the time si uh, Mang Larry. So, maraming salamat, Aldi, for sharing your uh, initial insights. So I think I might need to move on to our um, last uh, speaker for today and we will be huddling later and discussing uh, together, sharing the, our insights further. Uh, Thank you. Wala uh, anuman. I'm now uh, moving forward with now with Carl. So Carl Javier is the CEO of Puma Podcast and... He is an uh, which is an award-winning podcasting and non-music audio production team in the Philippines. Over a two-decade career, uh, Carl has written uh, or contributed to work in broadsheets, magazines, online publications, TV, film, etc. And for the last couple of years, with podcasts. Among his previous postings are he he was the creative director for a social enterprise. He was also the deputy director for marketing for a university press, uh, a lecturer right now at the Ateneo de Manila University. So some of, uh, he was nominated for the National Book Award twice for his comic work uh, as co-editor of Abangan, the, Philipp- the best Philippine comics 2014, and as writer of the manga ad- adaptation of Si Janus Silang at Ang Tiyanak ng Tabon. Uh, by Edgar, uh, by Sir Edgar of the Ateneo de Manila University as well, I, I believe. So I think uh, let's give the floor to Carl right now for his insights. Morning, Carl. Hello, good morning. Uh, salamat sa pag-imbita. Uh, thanks to everyone who's here. Well, I'm on a Saturday morning to talk about art. Um, <laughs> I have, I, I guess I have some reactions and um, a lot of them were based on the conversations I got to have um, at the exhibit. which also makes me feel like um, parang ang bottom line dito ay, ay one ang saya magpunta sa exhibit at sana magpunta tayo um, because there's so so much to experience there. Um, I, have, I have three sort of themes that I'll share and then we'll move on so that we can uh, bring the other panels who, who infinitely know much more than me. Pero one, my first thought when, when I saw it all was how influential um, Uh, Larry Alcala's cartooning style has been. And it's not necessarily just the fact that meron siyang very clearly his own uh, cartooning style, but I think um, that his ability to develop this unique style hasn't made people want to emulate that, but rather it's inspired a lot of comic book artists to... actually develop their own. Um, I was trying to think, and, and pag tumingin ka kasi sa Jario, ang, ang ganda tang broad ng range dati, I guess, kasi hindi na tayo nagja-Jario ngayon. But when you look at what was available in strip form, and now when you go online, and you look at the, uh, the comic eros who are currently filling the same conceptual space that he did in his time, 
makikita niyo yung broadness of the cartooning styles. And I think uh, even if you have people who are maybe a generation removed, hindi na siya inabot as a professor, pero consistently, nandun pa rin yung influence na yun. And uh, I, I, I will uh, connect, I guess, on a personal level, because I, so I, I grew up in, in the U.S., pero may, for some reason, may access ako sa Mang Ambo Comics. And I don't know how I got it, but that was really meaningful to me. Um, as, a, as a way to compare a Filipino cartooning and comic style against basically yung American comic books that I was more re- regularly exposed to. And then I connect that with yung during the pandemic, I think, or right after... Basa, 2020-ish, naglabas yung San Miguel ng Larry Alcala um, na, na can. And this, the Larry Alcala can was, had a um, had a modern version na uh, Rob Cham. And I think that that speaks volumes to the kind of influence because Rob is one of the most, uh, I, I think, the most well-known comics uh, artists, visual artists, um, working in the in the comic era space, and to to see sort of that balance, yung connection across time of these two styles. Parang hindi hindi na natin kailan explain kasi pag pinagdal pinagtabi mo yung two cans, you can see that they are unique cartoonists who operate parang from the same roots. Um, same new one, and in in speaking about parang beer and and beer cans and things like this. We can talk about ubiquity. And the fact that parang my my thought when I walked into the Alcala exhibit was you you knew Alcala's work even if you didn't know who he was. Um I I think that's why we've and I really appreciate that we've gone into so much of that history um and and where 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 he came from and, and sort of the progress of of where he is, but parang ang galing lang ng idea na hindi mo kailangan makilala yung artist para makilala yung art. Na unlike other artists that we learn about because we should study o ganyan, he just occupied a space in our culture. Um, and this actually brings me to uh, something that I've been thinking about because of uh, you know some prompts from from our conversations at the exhibit opening about basically this you know, the world we live in of disinformation and how we don't necessarily agree on things. And um, what I have come to think about because of this is that Larry Alcala forms a vernacular. Parang his visual art style and the work that he puts out forms a vernacular that we could all agree upon. Like, everyone could agree upon the yung slice of life. Na ayan, eto. Sige, we, we have all seen this. And it brings me to the idea of one of the reasons why there's so much fragmentation in our current discourse is because we don't have a, a, a singular platform that we all agree upon. And barang, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we were all celebrating that Thanks to mawawala yung print, madidemocratize ang conversations. Pero now, now that print is gone, mm-hmm. na, meron na akong feeling of, you know, kung may print, kung may physical na print, magkakasundo tayo dyan eh. And then naramdaman ko yung, well, kung pag binasa mo sa dyaryo kanina umaga, kahit yung comics yung pag-usapan nyo, nabasa din niya sa dyaryo kanina umaga, pag nakita kayo, you can agree on at least on that comic. And then, on the other things there. And that made me further appreciate yung experience dun sa exhibit mm-hmm. of a group of people coming together to look at art and to experience, you know, uh, specifically yung, yung slice of life and to come to, parang, to come to an agreement about this work. Yep. Um, it, it, it's so, parang medyo transformative yung feeling na, na lahat tayo nandon para ma-experience ito because because of how fragment, fragmented all of the online conversations are and then the last thing I guess kasi to transition to our bigger conversation is I wanted to think about his work as as comics and sequential art 
and how even in us in the single image of the slice of life meron kang sense of time mm-hmm. meron kang sense of narrative movement within one image and and um i know that there's certain like uh uh the, the, there's a formal technique to it in 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 comic creating yung pagcut mo ng image but the the thing is that wala siyang wala siyang gutters eh wala eh talagang marunong lang siya magpagalaw ng mata like he will move you through the image and it's so interesting to me how he does that and creates a sense of time and movement on a, a very flat you know on a very flat space um and so there's a lot of technical stuff there that i will ask the fine arts people to to explain to me later um yeah <laughs> so tanong ko na yung tanong ko like what one thing that i've worked with um in 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 creating with a lot of comic artists as a writer and and as a as a comics teacher is nakikita ko na yung composition ng pages minsan sobrang kalat and they have all of the tools available to them um the whole page layout uh yeah. panels gutters everything and yet ang kalat and then I, i i you go in and you look at the slice of life work and there's so many elements and so there's so many things in play and yet Um, in, it never feels sabog or kalat. And mm-hmm. so, yun. yun ang, I think yun ang first na question ko. Then I think we would need to have um, Professor Desus, Sir Ruben, and Aldi on, on on screen right now because thanks, Carl, actually, for for your um, uh, overview and your your observations of how uh, the graphic image is made through the comics and illustrations. And I think Uh, based on our tour guides, we actually we added that you know historically the 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 clustering of crowd images it's seen actually in all is art historically from non-Western art, Western art. Um, the West calls it uh, from the German and uh, dear experts on the on the audience, if you can correct me or not, uh, please. Uh, it's called a Willem book. It's a yun yung paraan ng paglalatag na sobrang daming detalye ng mga tao uh, sa isang imahen, whether it's on print or on wood carving. And in non-Western art, we also have yung, as some Filipino theory, uh, theoreticians have said, it's a horror vacui of things, which is very popular in you know Indian uh, art, Chinese art, yung maraming maraming tao or actually plants or animals that are feeding on to that uh nagte-tessellate lang sila at nagmo-morph lang and we we can, we are we that's indicative of the works of uh Mang Lari pero as Carl was saying it's very composed may composure and as uh, professor uh Ruben was saying may simplicity nga eh i mean with the graphic form of line drawing illustration itself as a very simple form compared to the to the chiaroscuro of you know classical oil painting or renaissance oil painting and the uh, more recent yung CGI na hyper real yung may mesh na na next time baka pwedeng nga nating amuin mismo yung art eh. of course there are also now olfactory art forms no but just to go back and I, i would need a response from everyone and as carl was saying ayun nga carl yung tanong mo during the opening uh, on the perspective or yung the way the eye is moving and i think there's a particular art um term there. So I think if you could raise a question right now to Sir uh, Ruben and, and of course Aldi for the, for their responses. Yeah. Um, regarding the, the question or the comment, Carl, um, we were talking the other day sa Exhibit Randall and yep. yung, yung, kasi ngayon ang daming options eh. Yung mga creators ngayon, you have all the digital options. Ang tendency is, ah, oh, Meron ganon, may ganon, gamitin natin. But you have to temper yourself. I guess during that time ni Mang Larry, it was also an advantage that you know, yung mga options na yun, wala nun. But at the same time, yung, yung you have to have this uh, grasp of visual perception that things like, um, you know, if you're working with so many elements, you have to have this basic concept of emphasis and subordination by you know by by making something move or appear more forward or more dominant a little it doesn't lessen the whole you know the whole um, how effective the material is things like uh, emphasis subordination rhythm balance these are things na 
somehow because of the options or the technical advantages we have right now, we tend to move into skill and the uh, available um, options that we can use to create our images to create our materials. But it goes back to how do we effectively um, present these images so that sabi ko nga yung word na clutter, um, may iwasan lalo ng slice of life na kasi dami nangyayari. Pero yung you have to temper yourself, you have to know uh, how to work on these elements in such a way that they work hand in hand. And yun nabanggit din ni Aldi kanina, yung storytelling. Nabanggit mo, Carl, yung di ba ngayon sa mga comics ngayon, parang medyo magulo. <laughs> uh, that's part of it. The options, the it even... Even in typography, na notice nyo. <laughs> even typography, that and daming fonts, daming libo libong fonts. Hala, gamitin natin yan. But you have to have this ability to determine that ito yung gagamitin ko, ito yung siguro that would enhance it a bit. And um, yeah, it's a matter of using these wide options effectively and going back to basics like it's not just skill, it's not just how well you render, but it's it's a storytelling, how to communicate these images in a very well thought and very cohesive in a very uh, well told manner. So, yun ang, ano ko, yun ang take on, on this thing. Okay. And then I think um, just to some, also as, as a chronicler, as we want to have something na parang, lahat all detailed pero dapat also edited composed very well so i think yung yung skill nga as we were saying during our conversations uh sir ruben ano, and carl yung weekly na habit niya of doing things kasi yung press time niya is two or three weeks in advance yung kailangan niyang gawing works no but i think siguro mag respond lang rin muna si aldi dun sa question ni carl yes. with regards to the form of of larry alcala Okay. Thank you for that wonderful question. Uh, yes. Ano yun eh? Feeling ko ganito. Uh, una, um, Sir Larry Alcala has like the sense of what yung nasa kanina, pinapractice pa rin yung fundamentals. Like yung elements and principles of arts, yung balance, di ba yung balance, yung uh, ano, pa, ano pa ba yung nasa principle? Unity, yung mga na hindi na hindi masy- na kahit chaotic, meron pa rin balance na ano, meron pa rin variety para hindi masyadong uh, mono, para hindi masyadong magulo kahit na marami marami nando. So, yung fundamentals alam niya, kaya pina-practice pa rin niya yun, uh, by heart. Tapos also, yung behind the scene siguro. Siguro feeling ko yung finished product kasi nakikita natin eh. Pero siguro yung before niya gawin yun, makalat rin yun. Parang tapos, pagkatapos yun, pagka as an artist, siguro, tinitignan niya, ano ba yung aalisin ko? Ano ba yung hindi kailangan? O sige, alisin ko to. Ano ba yung mga things that matters most na kailangan ko nang i-retain dito sa illustration na to? ba diba? Yung behind the scenes eh. Ganun rin sa panahon ngayon eh. Nakikita natin sa Instagram yung mga artist na gusto natin. Yung finished product lang nakikita natin, but yung sinaset aside natin yung process that goes behind it. So parang yung mga artist niya, yung younger artist, na frustrate kasi nakikita mo lang finished product yung hindi nila nakikita yung nangyayari behind this yung kalat ng table na ang daming illustrations, ang daming sketches, di ba? So yun, feeling ko ganun din. I think, pero kasama rin din yung third uh, nasasabihin ko na siguro um, as the years pass na continuous uh, continuous work of Sir Larry Alcala at years of experience, alam na niya kung paano, kung paano ibabalansihin yung, yung crowd, kung ano ba yung free space na meron, na pwede pang may breathing space yung, yung, yung uh, visually, yung visual breathing space dun sa area na yun. Siguro yung years of continuous practice and experience, alam na niya kung paano gagawin yan. Parang kumbaga nakuha na niya yung 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 uh, ano ba yung flow or yung yung tempo kung paano niya ibabalanse yung yung uh, illustrations niya specifically the slice of life so so yun yun yung take ko yun yung take ko na so kailangan parang alam mo yung fundamentals tapos yung pinapractice mo yun tapos uh, yung behind the scenes kaya importante yun and dapat uh, wag kang well, as young illustrators pa yun na rin sa younger illustrators sa akin mas young sa akin na Ano, okay lang magkalat. Parang huwag niyong intindihin kung malinis yung nakikita niyong finished product ng mga artist na gusto niyo. 
Kasi hindi naman yun nga, hindi naman natin nakikita yung nangyayari behind that. Tsaka yung before pa niya lang ma-achieve yung, yung look ng artwork. And yun, yung third, years of continuous practice. So dapat tuloy-tuloy yung practice so para ma- maging kasing linis tsaka sa simpulito ka ng mga gawa ni Sir Larry Alcala. Yep. Hindi, hindi, thanks Aldi. Meron din kasi, I think not just with the form of art, but definitely if Carl can comment yung form of li- literature and even just basic grammar. No? Sometimes yung balari la rin sa Filipino, yung sobrang dami nating sinasabi in, in a world of cacophony ngayon. Ang dami nating gusto sabihin, uh, ang dami nating gustong maintindihan, malaman. Tapos we all, as, as Sir uh, Ruben has been saying, We all have access to all of these things. But then we hark back to Larry Alcala's work. It re- still talks about um, clutter or, or the many, but we can see a particular viewpoint. Yung, yung planar field natin is, from that, uh, is viewed from the top, which gives us a sense of control as a viewer because we are uh, from looking at the top and we could see everybody's uh, actions and doing. But I guess another conversation siguro yun yung Uh, for art practice, kung makalat ka ba backstage or makalat ka ba on stage um, or, or with your work, I think uh, we can discuss that at a later time. But uh, I hope uh, we could move on to another question. Uh, and I think this has already been glossed over by everyone. Um, how do we, what's the difference between working now and before? Uh, I mean, Larry Alcala's time is a very particular time starting from post-World War. Um, as as both of I mean as everybody is has not been or was not a direct student of uh, Manglari I think even uh, Sir Ruben Ruben no so it with with the works at the exhibition right now and with you guys saying that you know the the backstage work for an artwork is maybe different from the output how do you think Uh, Larry Alcala's works can affect or inspire us to be more efficient with how we practice or what's, what are the differences? We already discussed uh, difference in technology but can you, have, can you share any insights? Perhaps Carl with, with your most recent activities uh, papaano yung pagkakaiba? We, because we are only assuming also the history but because of the family of the of um, the family of Alcala right now with Sir Boyet, they were always sharing the outputs of Mr. Alcala. So any comments from Carl uh, with how, how do we collaborate now and work for art and work, do works of art? Well, yung, yung immediate thought ko, kasi nabanggit ko kanini, maraming maraming komikero online. Mm-mm. And the fact that now, there's nothing stopping you. Ang daming Instagram komikero, ang daming Facebook komikero, In fact, I think uh, di naman arguable na the biggest komikero right now is Tarantadong Kalbo na diretso siyang digital. Hindi siya dumaan sa dyaryo. Nauna yung digital sa print. Yeah. And then kinocompile na. Pahabol na lang yon. And so that's the amazing thing is that if you have something to say and you're doing it in a way that the audience resonates with, di diretso ka sa audience. Wala nang intermediary. Wala nang oras eh. Um, I, I, but then the larger challenge of that is, ngayon, araw-araw, hinihingan siya ng mga tao. ba diba? Sa so, sobrang na-impress sila sa kanil, o yan, bilis niyang ano, mag-comment on what's happening now. Ngayon, nakaabang. And now there's this pressure of, well, how how is he going to address this today? And then when you factor in, not not just that, but, the ability of people to not just respond to you, but to actually be vicious to you online. Kapag nag-disagree sila sa ginagawa mo o ganyan, um, alam naman natin, napakahirap maglabas ng gawa. Yung, yung one, yung umupo ka at gumawa ka, may idea ka. Yung two, yung lakas ng loob minsan na maganda kaya to. So you go through all of that as a, an artistic process. Propose mo siya online. And there's always gonna be at least one person na Pangit naman yan. Huwag ka na lang gumawa ng comics. You know? and, and that's the... And so it's an entire new opportunity space in terms of foregoing publishers and editorial and all that and reaching people directly. But also, there's that viciousness of, of that. And then, but also, um, I think there's a lot more opportunity for collaboration. So, for example, ako, I can't draw. But I am... a 
fairly good enough writer na marami akong napapakiusapan na artist to, mm-hmm. to work with me. And so the collaboration space and the opportunity for ideas at para magbatuhan ay nandiyan na. In fact, we're no longer limited by physical space. Di ba? Pwede kayo mag-jamming sa Zoom tapos may comics na kayo or may artwork na kayo. And so those, uh, ako yan, yan yung immediate is I can find someone. In the same way na you can always find someone to agree with your weird idea now. <laughs> sa internet, di ba? You can probably find a collaborator who would be interested in working with you. Whether you're, uh, di ba, imagine you're an artist, gusto mo magawa ng comics, pero hindi ka marunong magsulat. Makakaharap, makakaharap ka na writer na will work with you also. Okay. So, uh, any remarks, uh, Professor Jesus? Any um, remarks? Yeah. No? Siguro, add ko doon sa process. Yeah, that's very important kasi, uh, parang inuugnay ko doon sa sa pagtuturo ko. Kasi we go through these stages that, you know, before you come up with a finished output, you go through several stages of, you know, concept, rough studies, revisions, babarilbarili, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> eh, eh, mahalaga yun eh. Uh, somehow, hindi na masyadong ma-appreciate or you really have to uh, ingrain it sa mga batang. Kasi nga, Everything is so instant, and they have tools to make everything so instant. So the, they miss the the opportunity of going through that process. Dahil nga, well, nainip sila, kaya naman mabilisan ito, things like that. Pero sabi ko, you, you know, you miss the chance to, you might, in, in your being so impatient about it, you might miss a gem of an idea that would, you know, come out from the process na initially, hindi mo nakuha, yung sabi nga, Initially, makalat pa yung trabaho mo o parang wala pang direksyon. Pero pag dumaan sa proseso at may, may ka-collaborate ka na magbibigay ng input sa'yo na, uy, oo nga. No? Kasi sometimes, masyado tayong ingrained sa ginagawa natin na mayroong punto na hindi natin nakikita na maaring, uy, oo nga, no? parang ganun. Um, especially with budding artists, it's very important that you go through the process And I always tell them, when you present studies, it doesn't have to be very clean. Kasi yung pagkamalinis ng gawa mo, it doesn't mean that your work is perfect or your, well, that nothing is a perfect work. But hindi ibig sabihin, pag malinis ka agad, eh, gets mo na. Nakuha mo na yung objective nung dapat mong gawin or effective na yung material mo. So, uh, yeah, um, yung from the, from what Carl and, and, and uh, Aldi said, proseso, maaring makalat pa yun maumpisa. Uh, magkakadireksyon yun after going through the process and let other people in your team or in your creative work look at it. Or even like if you're doing, um, if you're doing, especially kami sa, sa, sa doing um, books for kids, it's very important that you let someone see it, a kid view it, and just bigay mo lang sa kanya. Tapos, Pakwento ko lang, paano niya, ano nakikita niya, ano yung, ano yung insight niya. Kasi uh, mahalaga yun eh, mahalaga yun uh, na nakikita ng iba. Lalo na yung, yung taong ini-aim mo na magbasa o yung ini-aim mo na makapulot ng mga dapat mapulot sa material mo. I guess kay Mang Larry kasi he's being a family man and being... Uh, being observant, being, and even uh, encouraging his family to be, be very sensitive about things, be very observant, and living life, just living life. Yun, importante na yun eh. Kasi uh, dun magiging hindi lang at a certain level yung ilalabas. O lalo ngayon, it's, it's very output-oriented. And it's very, oh, we need that tomorrow. <laughs> But that's a reality. <laughs> that's a reality, no? Pero para maging may saysay at may kabuluhan at maging lasting at relevant, I think yung Kimang Lari kasi he, his work is reflective of how he lived life and how he became a family man. And he's being a family man, family man sa pamilya niya, sa community niya at sa, sa bayan, nag-reflect doon sa gawa niya. So para maging totoo yun, uh, it's not a matter of how, how polished your work is, how, how, how well you are in terms of skill. 
Mm-hmm. Yun. Okay. So I think uh, thanks uh, Sir Ruben yung um we would be thinking of the artist as a, you know as a genius as a as a uh, as somebody who can actually create a masterful uh thing whatever that is it would be music literary work um uh a, a visual art sculpture but i think with the point what you're pointing out sir Robin, here right now is that because the the form is weekly you know yung temperance natin yung regularity of doing it refining it like a like a sword na hinahasa natin in order to be more uh, sharpened it, it it becomes sharper and then again also yung groundedness ni alcala i think although most of the slice of life works are again as i said earlier are from the top yung viewpoint natin yung groundedness niya yung very quiet that he looks at people and observes them and to think that his viewpoint knowing that uh, i think film film wise or film technology wala pa tayong mga drone shots noong panahon and of course meron na sigurong crane by the 1940s or 1950s and this might have also contributed to his um inspiration sabi ng uh, sa ating as as written by you as uh, sir Ruben diba si Alfred Hitchcock was actually an inspiration by Alcala kasi gusto niya nagka-camouflage siya or nagka-camera roll siya mismo dun sa loob ng not just Slice of Life but I think the earlier um, comics mm-hmm. like Kalabog and Bosho bigla siyang kumakaway so, so yung neorealist manner of that okay this is my creation they are my characters but I'm also part of it mm-hmm. yung tenderness as I, as you said uh, Sir Ruben do sa, sa real is that may tenderness nga of this very keen tenderness and keenness on you know just being also compassionate i think with 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 your subjects or or the the inspiration that you have for 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 what you are going to produce as an artist so um just checking our time though i i think we could and we have actually also discussed this in bits and pieces na um maybe in the age of disinformation and quick messaging as carl said si tarantado kalbo nga bilis magrespond to a particular um you know insight parang yung issue is two hours ago meron ng out form and con- inversely Larry Alcala has a limit of like three weeks in order to respond to a situation uh during his time so how do you, how do you guys think of Larry Alcala uh of his way of story and truth telling para matuto tayo and what are the legacies of Alcala's practice and outputs of wit and humor na matu- pwede nating hugutan ng 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 aral or ng uh, maybe a technique or, or or inspiration so we could actually go forward with our you know work on art works of art design and visual communications and then we'll field questions from the uh, audience after you answer thank you anybody can answer aldi uh, would you like to start or sige um kasi kasi para sa akin lagi kong iniisip lang napagkwentuhan namin to ng best friend ko dati na nakaupo lang kami sa 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 along Cubao and sa nakita ko yung mural eh may mural kasi may mural sa EDSA sabi ko ganda ng mural sabi ng best friend ko ah, maganda nga pero anong ibig sabihin parang may message ako ano yung kanino para kanin siya so so tumatak sa akin na parang if you already have the means of uh, like voicing out what you want to voice out um kung may kung nandiyan ka na for example Larry you already have he already has that uh, weekly uh, spot dun sa newspaper para sa slice of life for example you're uh, you're doing comics like Sir Carl and the other comic comiceros you're already a children's book artist you're already a children's book illustrator so ang importante doon yung mensahe ano ba yung gusto mong iparating doon sa makakakita ng work mo may uh, ano ba yung gaya ng gawa rin ni Sir Larry na alisin mo yung mga hindi necessaryng elements tapos ano yung pagtuunan mo lang ng pansin yung yung pinakang kailangan ano ba yung pinakang message na gusto mong convey um is it like uh, mabigat na story 
magandang illustrations pero papakita mo pa rin kahit mabigat siya or kahit na harsh or kahit na sa tingin mo. Hindi dapat tinatakal or sa tingin mo dati tabu itong issue na to. Will you show it? Kasi nangyayari to, will you show it dahil kailangan? Will you show it to them dahil it affects them directly? Or will you show them dahil baka hindi nila alam na nangyayari to? Yung mga gano'n. So if you already have like, lalo na ngayon gaya ng sinabi ni Circle, parang online, ang dami, pwede ka na makipag-collab kahit kanino. So parang yung mga outputs, hindi sobrang layo na na mararating yung illustrations, yung drawings, yung artworks mo, kahit international, ang daming makakakita eh. So, so, so ngayon parang sobrang lame na, lame na na-excuse na hindi mo ma-voice out yung gusto mong sabihin. Lalo na, kahit, kahit nga yung mga wala dapat voice, nag-voice out pa rin eh. So, so parang unfair na to be uh, unfair or, or hindi na tama na parang maging neutral ka sa panahon na to. Parang hindi na tama na wala kang boses. Kahit tagano kaliit yung boses na yan, yung message na gusto mong i-convey, parang sobrang limited na nung, ex- uh, parang hindi na, sh- hindi na okay na magkaroon ng excuse ngayon dahil nga sa sobrang lawak at dami na ng means online. Meron pa rin friends kung paano mo i-voice out yung gusto mo i-voice out. Kung paano mo i-convey yung message yung gusto mo i-convey. Kasi nga, nandiyan ka na eh. So, make use of that platform that you all, and that opportunity that you already have to reach out to wider audience and to let them know what you want them to know. Ayun, yun sa akin. Okay, thanks, Aldi. So, uh, any comments from Carl or Sir Ruben? Hmm. Siguro ano, add ko lang, siguro yung in relation to nang isa nangyayari ngayon, what makes his work very effective, it's because yung it's not just looking at the, the, the slice of life piece with so many things going on. You can see a part of yourself there, asan ako dito? Parang, uh, at saka, sa totoo lang, hindi ka isolated eh. You, you're always, whatever your actions, whatever your, whoever you are, in whatever your directions, like kung barubal man yung ginagawa mo o, o ano ka, uh, asset ka sa community to simple means, it always has an effect on the other members of your community. And that's reflective sa slice of life. So, I guess in terms of communication ngayon, um, vis-a-vis yung slice of life yung mga uh, no question, totoo yun sa kanya. Totoo in not just portraying what happens in our society, in our community, in our family. Totoo siya kasi nakikita mo na bawat galaw ng isa may epekto sa isa. And that validates things. It, it proves na, no, uh, mukhang may diferensya dito. Yes, this is this is good for the community because in simple ways, kahit na simple para nakikita mo yung epekto eh. And that's what's good about slice of life. It's not an isolated pre- representation of, of what is happening or of an individual, but it, it shows in an interesting, in a lighthearted manner, kung aning epekto mo sa community, sa paligid mo, sa environment. And it's not, well, it's not a very pushy thing, but it hits you in a way na, o oh, nga, no? And siguro ngayon, in terms of ideas, kaya rin tayo nagkakagulo. It seems like everything's being pushed. It's being rammed on your throat, no? Ganon. Um, yun na take ko doon. Um, that's why, ako nga, dream, ang dream, sana ang wish ko, sana yung yung mga gawa ni Mang Larry, mas makilala pa ng mga, mga kabataan ngayon si Mang Larry at yung mga dikha niya. Yeah. Uh, magkaroon sana ng venue o magkaroon ng push na sana sa pag-aaral ng mga bata. Not just with, with you know, with, with the youth or taking fine arts or into the creative fields. Ma, ma, mapakilala sa mga kabataan si Mang Larry at yung gawa niya. Mm-hmm. Yun. Yes. And thanks, Sir Ruben. And I think, yeah, that's that's the endeavor. That's why we have this exhibition. 
we have this online program and based on our experience with the uh, M staff at the site, uh, some of us are at SMX all right now. Of course, yung mga tanong kasi sa amin is that meron ba tayong catalog ni Mang Larry? Then eventually that was also a project, hopefully. But as you all know, most of our um, resources are from the Cultural Center of the Philippines Library and Archives. And we also have some, of course, through the family of Mr. Larry Alcala, the images. And uh, since we're talking now about community, I would just like to also look now at the chat uh, to uh, field in some comments or questions. Uh, I think as mentioned, ayun nga, may wish dito from, um, from one of our attendees na sana nga may book. And then uh, just also for the information of everyone, Phil, Phil Post um, created a new stamp collection of Larry Alcala's images. Um, and they were, um, um, we had them now in May. So aside from the 2000, the early 2000 um, uh, commemorative stamp that we did for, or that we did for Larry Alcala. So let me just check the messages here. I think we have a comment from Nancy, and I'm just looking at another monitor. Nancy Cruz. So we also acknowledge some members of the Ang Inc. on the call right now. And <laughs> also, Samahang Cartoonista na Pilipinas. Hello. So welcome to the call. Uh, Nancy Cruz says, I agree with Prof. Ruben, understanding the process and trying to ex instill, explain, and make the children understand that it's not only the output or end product which matters, but the process to give quality. The immediate and instant gratification is my challenge as an art teacher. My students are always asking and wanting the fast track, which is the digital arts as the young uh, as them as young generation sees it. A struggle to make the students now understand the old school, quote unquote. I speak as a generation bridging the analogy and digital uh, generation. So it's a, a very good insight from Nemsi and if any of our um, speakers can respond to that. Again, it's, it's, it's with the form, with the way we, we actually, the pedagogy natin of actually teaching how to draw and teaching how to, you know, visualize, uh, essentially. How do we put something outside and create it on another form or translate it to do writing or actually to sculpture, to, to print, to poster even. So any responses to that? Yeah, the, the, sorry, I, go ahead, please. I actually just wanted to build on what you said, sir, and then connect ko dito. Pero yung iniisip ko when, when, when we were at the exhibit was that these are works that make you stop. So in a world where parang iniisip ko kasi sa amin, minsan parang may, 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 may so like in podcasting, it's a one-minute metric. You need to retain someone for one minute. Tapos in TikTok, it says the metric is three seconds. You must be compelling in three seconds, and then and then people move on, and that's it. And that's that's how quickly content is consumed, and that's why it's so difficult to be a producer of art in a world of content production. Because content is consumed, and then, wala tapos na. Go go go. Diba even YouTube struggles with this, where may YouTube reels na na. Slide, slide, one minute, one minute na lang. So there's an incentivizing of a lowering of interest. Pero pag nagbitbit ka ng tao to go to the exhibit and look at work, sa akin naman yung punta nyo kung hindi kayo mag-stay doon. Diba? And it's the kind of work that you, you stay there. And, and granted, there is the little bonus of hahanapin mo yung mukha niya doon. But the, 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 these are images that are packed, that make you stop, make you think. You don't swipe past them. You don't go to the next thing because you're actually rewarded with the experience of the, the artwork. So yun yung parang on the viewer artwork side. But on the teacher side, I totally agree. I, I feel this because sa, sa, sa literature parang yung hindi ko kayang magpalampas ng grammatical errors kung bibigyan kayo ng creative writing degree. Alam mo yan, yung parang kung, kung magkakaroon ka ng creative writing degree pero nagsas, nagsusulat ka ng sabit na sentences, hindi talaga pwede yun. So, paano kita ipapasa, lalapas ka sa next class? Di ba, who's the next teacher? And makikita na work mo, ha? Nakapasa ka sa last teacher mo? Eh, ganito ko magsulat. Um, 
the, it, I, 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 I can understand it would be the same for for art teachers. To, na, you need people to sit down and actually go through the mechanical process. Mm-hmm. By the, you have to go through the mechanical process of it's building up a muscle. Eh? It's mm-hmm. like one thing. My my metaphor is always a basketball. Yung gusto mo nag three sixty like whatever ka na at nag three point shot ka hindi ka parehong maruno mag dribble. Diba? So parang that has to be the emphasis. Like we need to learn how to dribble. We need to learn how to move on the court, and then we can do all of the fancy things na pinapangarap niyo. Um, it's going to be a struggle, especially because of so much instant gratification. And I think like when Aldi was speaking earlier, and he's po, what if may parang parang get back? Yung di ba yung nine hour version of get back where they showed the Beatles fighting, pangit yung pangit yung jam nila, wala sila sa tono, and then they're figuring it out. And then finally, you get to something na medyo okay naman. And figuring out what is the B-side, what is the back process, and celebrating that for artistic production. Kasi nga, lagi tayong, okay, here's the final work. Because we want it to seem effortless. Di ba, there's an entire thread of art criticism and art theory that says it's only good art if it looks effortless. Mm-hmm. And revealing our process actually is detrimental to people's appreciation of it. But for fellow practitioners, having access to seeing that, ay, si ganyan is, sumasabit pala siya sa ganito, di ba? It, it actually inspires you. Eh. Like for me, that, that yung get back, to sec, it inspires me na, eh, sila palpak-palpak din pala yung, di naman every time na humawak sila na instrumento, perfect. And to see that here, that would be a, a transformative thing for many people. Yeah, great, great points, Carl, and thank you. And just to quickly go to our F- FB Live comments again, the clamor to have, um, ayun nga mga tipong publishing uh, Larry Alcala books. Perhaps in the future, uh, some of our visitors yesterday are, most of them, and uh, my M colleagues are would agree are actually mga parents inviting children to look at the artworks. Kasi yung yung naman just to get back to you sa time that we actually now consume or look at the art ni Larry Alcala. Ito naman mga parents of perhaps uh, age 30 to 60. We, all, we actually have a um, grandfather coming in. A grand, uh, mag-asawa sila, grandparents. Na sabi nila, they saw Kalabog and Bosho nga sa Filipino comics and then they shifted to Panorama, I think. So, maganda mga comments. And the, the, the mom and dad, gusto nilang makita yung ipakita sa kids nila yung artwork kasi yung, so, yung nostalgia talaga nila very apparent and kung ganun yung epekto sa kanila gusto nilang impart yung goodness of that effect of the work to their kids no matter how the kids were saying parang do you like the work um okay yung nawala na rin kasi siya do sa time but eventually we have new artists illustrators right now who are maybe in the lineage of you know looking at the words I view of a popular uh, of a society or a community and then actually uh, yeah just quickly fielding some comments here uh, Liza Flores hi Liza Mang Larry's slice of life are like visual time capsules today's generation can only learn about his art but also about our country's history of course definitely thank you for that so I think um, we need to cap last few words please from everyone uh, can we start with Aldi, then Carl, then uh, Professor Ruben, if that's okay? Quick quick remarks lang pa. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you again for having me together with Sir Ruben and Sir Carl. Um, susugan ko lang yung sinabi ni Eliza, no? na parang as artists and as illustrators, yun din eh, yung parang uh, uh, aside from being storytellers, yung ginagawa natin para siyang ano na eh, para siyang documentation of what's happening kasi may print na yun eh. so somehow parang nare-retain na siya na, na may print out na ganito may libro kang ganito uh, especially if yung libro mo tungkol sa nangyaring ganito na madaling makalimutan ng, ng mga Filipino especially meron kang proof na ah, tingnan mo basahin mo tong libro nito ito yung nangyari dati so it's really really important for us to remember that as illustrators, as artists, na like Sir Larry and Slice of Life, we're parang dinodocument natin and pinipreserve natin yung culture and history 
of the Philippines na for the next 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 generations na baka wala na yung mga ganito or baka nabura na sa memory ng mga tao yung ganito or baka na na means trans uh, mistranslate na as the time goes by so meron kang proof somehow proof na ito yung printed copy ito yung drawings na nangyari noon so so yun yun lang yun lang and um, again art, thank you art as evidence yeah yes yun, yeah. okay and then Carl quick remarks So, uh, salamat lang. Thanks for inviting. Guys, yung sarap na pag, nung ganitong usapan. I've really missed these kinds of conversations in the in, in exhibits and and here and so thanks to the M for organizing this. Um and I really main point is if you can go to the exhibit, experience this and the larger point also being where ang in all of this parang fragmentation, toxicity, aggression, all of that art is the opportunity to break through all of it. Yeah. And so encouraging not 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 even just artistic production pero experiencing art. And like I said, last couple of days I've been driving down EDSA and it's been crappy billboards and kung ano-ano. It's like if we could just give people a little more art in their lives and continue to make it accessible and continue to find the forms in which we can reach them and make connections. I think that's sort of the first step. And so having uh, Alcala's work available, that's one, but finding ways to propagate more and to reach more people is probably the next step for us all. Thanks, Carl. And just quickly, uh, pushing a uh, comment here from Chong Ardevilla. Uh, he's an exemplar of how visual communication is about context and content, not just to reflect society, but as a means of nation building wise art and process. So I think uh, if we all agree with that. Uh, lastly, Professor Ruben, before we wrap up, Yeah, as I um, made some sort of a title to my presentation earlier, I said Larry Alcala, uh, Mastery in Simplicity and um, Messages and Images. Um, I guess simplicity is a very important, being simple nowadays, it's, it's, a, it's very important. It's a difficult task, but not necessarily, when you say you become simple, you become ineffective. Because again, with all the, with all the chaos, with all the available options right now. Uh, you have to go back to the core. You have to know what you should use and not use. You should know how to temper yourself in terms of skill. Um, messages and images, this is very important. Whether you like it or not, may mensahe kang binibigay. Kahit hindi intention mo magbigay na mensahe. Yeah. Kaya dapat may may responsibilidad ka mm -hmm. in using the tool, in, in using the creativity, um, in, in using your skill to communicate something. Um, simplicity, messages and images. Um, let's face it, and dami na options, but um, technology is a tool. Use it to communicate your messages, your images effectively. And um, but the tool is not always the end all, and it's not always what is the best way of presenting things. Um, I remember uh, a lady icon in the advertising agency. She said. Huwag kang ma-pressure sa tool. Huwag kang ma-pressure sa technology. Huwag kang ma-overwhelm. Dahil tool yan and you might miss the gem of an idea because of your being overwhelmed or being you know, scared or being pressured na kina magamit ko lahat. So, yun. Um, simplicity is very important. And it's, I guess, at this time, it's an effective way of You know, eliminating clutter and focusing on what you're actually supposed to say. Because whether you're, you like it or not, there's always an image that is coming out in whatever you communicate. And hopefully that image is true and something that would benefit a greater majority of us. Okay. Thank you for that, Professor uh, De Jesus. So now... Uh... Let's formally conclude this uh, 
M Art Inspire series. Uh, maraming salamat po, Professor De Jesus, um, Carl, and Aldi for sharing time, knowledge, and insights with us uh, this morning. And most of all, maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga nakadalo via Zoom and over at Facebook Live. Uh, this uh, We will have a recording of this session, so please check it out in our Facebook or our YouTube um, YouTube. So now I quickly ask, thank you, uh, panelists. Thank I quickly you. ask uh, Mr. Dan Devela of our, uh, our Deputy Director for Exhibition Programs and Operations for a few reminders. Morning, Dan. Uh, thank you, Randall. So we invite everyone to join our next online webinar featuring a favorite comiquero and visual artist known for his works like Kiko Machine, Silent Comics, and News Hardcore. Uh, join Manix Abrera as he talks about his work and as he provides basic tips for drawing your own cartoon character, all for the fun of making art. So thank you once again for joining the fourth edition of Art Inspires. This features the exhibition Larry Alcala's Slices of Life Wit and Humor, which will remain on view at SMX Convention Center, Aura, SM Aura Premier, Bonifacio Global City, Taguig, until June 6. So we encourage everyone to accomplish the evaluation form. The, current, the link is currently posted in the Zoom and Facebook chat boxes. For more information and updates on the Metropolitan Museum of Manila's program offerings and future exhibitions, please follow us on our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So we thank you once again, everyone, for joining us this morning. We'll see you again in our next webinar. Thank you, everyone. Um, Corinne, can we stop recording, please?